Bokeh Tov, Chavrim. I'm Stephen Benun. You're watching Israeli News Live. No peace inside of Syria this morning. As we briefly reported this morning already, uh, cruise missiles from the United States Navy off in the Mediterranean. Different reports as far as how many, some saying up to as many as 70, uh, U.S. saying 50 cruise missiles. Russia is saying that 59 cruise missiles had struck the air base in Homs, Syria. According to President Donald Trump, this was the base that the Syrian government used to actually launch strikes uh, on the Idlib area uh, that was also alleged that the Syrian government used the sarin, the deadly sarin gas, even possibly another uh, chemical as well, uh, to kill and maim the people there. 20 civilians were, uh, or excuse me, 20 children, I believe, were killed in that attack. As many as 80 people is re reported that were killed. And again, no investigation has actually been done as regards whether or not it was the Syrian government that actually uh, caused the sarin gas attack. The Syrian government did admit that they targeted a weapons facility there, and of course they deny any wrongdoing in the sarin gas attack uh, that killed the children as well as the adults in the attack there. As we have reported here on Israeli News Live, there had already been evidence surfacing that it was not the Syrian government, but rather the rebel forces uh, capitalizing on the aerial bombardment that the Syrian government did on their weapons facility. Uh, we might note as well, 2013, President Barack Obama was looking to justify putting boots on the ground inside of Syria as a result of a chemical weapons attack that was done on a civilian population then. And even at that time, we at Israeli News Live believed the Western media reports that it was indeed the Syrian government and saw every right that the American government had to justify the removal of uh, President Bashar al-Assad. Only though afterwards we began to see the evidence that emerged that, that exonerated uh, that of President Bashar al-Assad. The most convincing of all was Aaron Erdem, who was a uh, Turkish parliament member at the time, ended up being in prison for coming out and exposing uh, the Turkish government's involvement in allowing uh, the sarin gas to slip right through its own finger with ice people that they had actually captured, detained uh, for questioning, but later the Turkish government released them. It appears that the uh, country's prime minister as well as President Erdogan were involved in allowing the sarin gas to slip inside of Syria. It was there at about that time, as Aaron Erdogan pointed out in an interview on RT News, that this gas was indeed used against the civilian population, and he believed that it was actually coordinated uh, by uh, those from from Turkey and even European allies with the Americans full knowledge of what was going on. Those of you that remember uh, Seymour Hirsch, we brought out his information. He's an investigative journalist, uh, lives, if I, if I uh, writes for uh, several American uh, media uh, outlets as well, but Seymour Hirsch had clear evidence uh, that proved that Hillary Clinton, when she was Secretary of State, also uh, pushed for the removal of the sarin gas inside of Libya, the stockpiles there, and that they would be smuggled in to use them inside of Syria. There was all kinds of evidence that pointed that it was nothing to do with President Bashar al-Assad. This is why we took our stand, uh, stance for President Bashar al-Assad in that particular issue. Don't say that I stand with him on everything that has been going on, but clearly the war that has been perpetrated in this country, uh, this as it's been called a civil war clearly cannot be a civil war that was done by the Syrian people when 35 nationalities have been proven to be fighting inside the country against President Bashar al-Assad. Now then we find uh, this latest uh, round of sarin gas that was used and of course immediately as a result of the information that came out in 2013 and that we were too quick to, uh, to jump to judgment against President Bashar al-Assad and his government, uh, we took a step back and began to look for evidence that again it may be the rebels using it only to use it as a device to blame Bashar al-Assad and evidence began to emerge immediately from the sarin gas attack. The white helmets who have become very famous in America as great uh, heroes of delivering the people there inside of Syria only to find out that 
very interesting photos emerged that we shared with you here on Israeli News Live. They are decontaminating these sarin gas victims totally unprotected, knowing that only a drop of sarin gas could kill a full-grown adult. Very strange. They'd received two about a month prior sarin gas uh, or chemical weapons suits to be able to use for this type of incident, but they weren't using it for their video footage. And as well, uh, other things began to emerge. One particular Arab man a day before the attack spe speaks about how that there is going to be a chemical attack in the media uh, very soon. And the very next day, that very thing happens. How did he know it was coming? What was going on about this? What were they planning and plotting uh, to blame Bashar al-Assad? Or was this to help give the rebels an advantage as they did about a year ago over in Del El Zord where the U.S. for about an hour bombarded the, uh, the Syrian military in order to give ISIS the upper hand uh, because they were losing that stronghold. And again, it was around the Syrian air base. Now what the, what the West never told anyone is that up to 20 Russian special forces were also killed in that attack and Russia did retaliate sending a cruise missile a bunker buster over into Aleppo there that killed a bunch of uh, secret agents that were carrying out the attacks on Del Azor never made the public media in the West nor in Europe either but we did cover it on Israeli News Live it was picked up in the Russian media uh, that they were speaking about how they had taken out that secret base in Aleppo which included Saudis, Turkish, uh, uh, Qatars, as well as Israeli, even an American uh, uh, CIA and Mossad agents that were working inside of this secret facility. So I am very concerned once again, now 59 cruise missiles, according to the Russian media, have fallen upon uh, the base there inside of homes. And by the way, guys, that also happens to be the base that is used by Russia. Now, the U.S. Uh, president, uh, from what we understand, did call and warn Russia that they were about to launch these cruise missiles. And we did check with a good friend of ours at RT News there that has been on the ground on many occasions, won't speak his name at this point right now, but I did contact him this morning to find out, did Russia indeed use the S-300 or Syria use the S-300 uh, or S-400 missile systems to try to stop these incoming cruise missiles and from what he shared with me back he said from what I am finding out thus far there was no uh, uh, reaction by Russia or Syria with the S-300 missile systems 15 Syrian warplanes were taken out now granted I, I do stand with this as well if Bashar al-Assad did the chemical attack on his people then I have to stand with President Trump on what the action that he did but my biggest concern is, and even as the Russian president, uh, he is actually condemning the acts, is that there was no investigation as to whether or not it was actually the Syrian government. This was done without investigation. That's where the issue becomes very concerning uh, to me and what we're seeing, that there was no investigation as to whether or not Syria actually did this act or not. And again, too much evidence in 2013 proved otherwise, and yet the American government still claims that the Syrian government gassed its people originally. So uh, I don't blame though. Let me tell you another thing too that I really feel strongly about in this case here. I don't think that President Donald Trump really knows himself other than what the intel is being told to him. I believe that there are powers higher than he is in America that are telling him this is what it is. You have got to act and they push him in the corner to make that action. He is a man that will stand up strong when need to, needs to be to stand up strong. And so therefore, I don't believe that he is aware of it. Just as we pointed out the other day, uh, before the, the gas attack even happened, the United States is moving military equipment in position all around Damascus. They moved in a heavy military equipment uh, up over in Lebanon. They moved it now into uh, up in the Aquaba, Jordan's southern base there. Uh, 
Clearly, the U.S. is getting ready to take down Syria, as General Wesley Clark said that they would. Now, also on the article you have here, U.S. Air Base Attacks Syrian Government Troops, uh, this, is, this article does confirm here as well that Russian uh, forces and Russian planes were at this air base as well. So this may be... Uh, taken by Russia as an aggression against them. And that's where my concern is, is how is Russia going to react? Now, we already have been able to capture from Battle Analytics here, who has actually posted the first images coming out of the actual strike on uh, the Holmes base. Watch this right here. We'll let it play to where you can hear this as well. Uh, but this is the cruise missiles that were following, falling on the Holmes base here. And you're fixing to see a big bomb here drop in just a second. It's going to hit close to the camera guy here. Uh, but these are part of the 59. There it goes right there. So uh, that was the missile that struck there. Who is filming it? I have no idea. But that's some of the early footage there that has just come out. We wanted to share that with you here. We also have uh, here, this is a, a photograph that was taken uh, uh, during the daylight hours, the smoke still rising from the Holmes Air, air Base uh, inside of Syria there. Uh, this is by Jeffrey uh, Hinerot, uh, that where the American military struck the, the base there. This is early things that we're able to capture thus far. I can't say whether or not this is really a true. Uh, Battle Analytics also loaded this photo here. Supposedly, this is alleged that this is uh, part of the ruins inside of the Holmes uh, military base, the air base in Holmes province there. have no way to confirm that. I do believe that the video is authentic and what we were seeing there. But as of yet, uh, nothing else that I can see. Here that all the Russian forces are safe. I did uh, check with Ma Murad Gaziev about this because I know he is there on the ground. Or I don't think he's in Syria right now, but he's been on the ground in Syria many times before. Appreciate him getting back with us and letting us know that uh, as well. Anyway, Russia suspends the memorandum with U.S. on the flight safety in Syria. According to the foreign ministry, this is a major change in the posture with Russia. Again, I believe that this could cause thing, uh, things to escalate inside of there. Sputnik News released this oh, right, right as we were getting ready to go to broadcast there. So as Russia has uh, suspended its memorandum for understanding of air safety over Syria with the United States following the deadly U.S. missile attack on the uh, Sharit airfield, the Russian foreign ministry said Friday, Russia suspends the memorandum on the prevention of incidents ensuring air safety during operations in Syria reached with the U.S., the ministry said in a statement. Now, is this only the beginning uh, of more escalations or is this more so just Russia uh, responding uh, kind of like tit for tat, this is, uh, you know, you did this, and this is the way we are responding uh, back as well. Uh, so don't know as, as of yet right now how that's going to, to, to play out, uh, but we will, we will be following this uh, more to see how things unfold. It is a very tense situation, no doubt, between the United States and Russia at this point right now. I am still trying to find out, were there any casualties? Now, Murad uh, has just informed me that there were none that he is aware of as of now. So uh, I'm sure if there is uh, casualties there, that will definitely alter the outcome of this conflict. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live, the latest uh, on the issue there with the U.S. strike on the Holmes Air Base there inside of Syria, Erev Tov.